Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. It doesn't mean that every recording I do is going to cause you to fall asleep, but it's just best to be safe, if you know what I mean, because if, for example, you do listen to me on some of my other sleep recordings, like Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis or Let Me Bore You to Sleep podcasts, you might get used to what would, you know, at the moment you'd think, well, I've got quite an exciting voice, but it might, it might, uh, you might get used to it boring you a bit and slowing your mind down and uh, falling into a, a sleep, peaceful sleep. So that's why I do this. So I always say, only listen when you can safely close your eyes because uh, your safety is the number one uh, priority. So, what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to do an exercise, a, you can call it an anxiety reducing exercise, uh, relax, you know, so a stress reducing exercise, whatever. It's, it's basically, and I'm going to do quite a few varieties of this in future recordings. So this isn't going to be a long recording, but it is something that you can test out for yourself. Something that you can do on your own, in your own time. Uh, we'll go through it in the recording as well while I'm talking, but it's something that you can do. Um, and I've got a thousand different ideas in my head at the moment, so I'm going to stick to the one that I planned to do before I press record because I do have a tendency of uh, <laughs> going off on a tangent sometimes and before I go any further just let you know if you like what I do please leave a review on the website uh, also all of my stuff all of my recordings are on my website to stream for free or to download for free. So I understand that you may use podcast hosts like Spotify, Stitcher, Castbox, wherever, uh, iTunes podcasts or Apple podcasts, Spreaker. Those links are also on my website. So everything's on there. Um, so yeah, please visit, have a look. And everything that all the new recordings are always uh, on the first page uh, under latest latest recordings. Now that's the boring stuff out of the way. So what we're going to do? I, I want to talk about. Um, just bear with me while I do this as well, because you might think, "What on earth are you doing?" Um, and also there may be background sounds, but we don't need silence for this. This is not sleep. This is not going into some big, deep relaxation session, you know, uh, trancey stuff. This is some a practical thing that we can do. Now, if you think about a plane, like a little... A toy plane that you can remote control, you know, or it could be a. I suppose planes aren't used so much now, are they? It could be a. What are they called? Anyway, let's say plane, but you know, anything that basically you can remote control from the ground and it flies. It doesn't go necessarily particularly high, depending, you know, you. 
you might have a really expensive one, but let's say you just got a, a standard little remote control model plane. And connect an anxiety with that plane. Something that you, uh, whenever you think about it, it causes, it, it's like a trigger, you know? I'm not saying the plane is a trigger, but if you think about this thing, it maybe it upsets you or just cause you to feel a bit ugh, or just physically uh, an unpleasant experience. And I don't want you to focus on anything big. That's, that's to start with. Uh, when you start out with exercises like this, I would suggest you start with something that's annoying. Like my voice. No, something annoying. Uh, something that causes a mild discomfort, not something that is um, traumatic because you can build up to that stuff. But I, so I, the way I see it, when you've got a traumatic incident, we've also got lots of other incidences, anxieties, stresses, panicky situations and thoughts and feelings as well that may not necessarily have anything to do with that, you know, the big thing that might be there in the past. Um, or something you're worried about in the future that may be big, you know. So, so you think of that, I think of it as like a table. And you may think, all right, now you're talking about a plane, now you're talking about a table, where are you going with this? Bear with me. You've got the table top. But instead of just four legs, you've got thousands and thousands of legs. Maybe hundreds, but let's say thousands of various uh, quality of uh, stress, anxiety, memories, things that kind of mix together. Yeah? So what we do is... Work on the lesser ones first, the weaker ones, the ones that aren't as strong. Because when you start taking the weaker legs away from underneath that big, heavy table top, the rest of the legs start to get weaker because they're having to take the pressure of that big table top. So they start to get weaker. Because if you ever watch The World's Strongest Man on TV, you might not watch it, but what is quite interesting to see is these are absolute monsters of men. They, they, they can lift a house. It's ridiculous how strong they are. But as they're doing the, the tasks, like lifting big things, whatever, they get weaker. So they're strong, but they might be holding something up above them with two hands or to the sides of them, and they start to get weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker, and eventually they drop whatever it is they're holding. So basically the thing, if they're holding something up, a barbell with the heaviest weight above their head, Eventually, their arms, shoulders, body gets weaker and weaker, and eventually they have to let the bar of all the weights drop to the floor. There's no way. And these men are stronger than any any table leg in the world. You know, these, these are absolutely monsters of men with strength. But even they have to let it go because they get weak. But if there was three or four men holding that, two either side of the of the bar and then one in the middle, maybe another one holding the actual weight bit on the bar, they could hold it for maybe 
ten times the time. But as soon as you take one person away, it starts to get off balance, starts to weaken. The other people start to weaken. I and mean, a good example of this was uh, in London a few years ago, a bloke on a, a trice. What was those big bikes with the big wheels? Just a penny farthing, is it? A penny farthing. And the most ridiculous thing in the world is to ride one of those on a busy road. But this person was doing it anyway. And unfortunately, he ended up under a bus. He survived, so it's not a... Um, the, 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 the reason it's a beautiful story is because all the public, not all of the public, someone, you can't lift a bus. None of us could lift a bus. Uh, maybe the world's strongest man could could lift a bus. I don't know, could like lift it up. He wouldn't be able to lift it all the way up and push it over. I mean, it's just a, I guess it's super heavy. But what happened is loads of people got together and lifted the bus off the man something that would have took firefighters quite a long time to you know with cranes and jacks and all that stuff to remove it they physically lifted it it's on the internet it's on YouTube if you just put in bus lifted off cyclists by bystanders or something in London Together, they could do it. Now, if there had been three people less, they might not have been able to do it. Or if they lifted it, and then five people just said, oh, it's lifted now, let's walk away, that bus might have dropped back onto that cyclist. So it does take a lot of people to, to lift that bus. It takes a lot of legs to keep the real big anxiety, panic, you know, it takes a lot of legs to support that. That's where I'm going with this. So, and I had no idea I was going to talk about a bus and a penny farthing bicycle when I started this recording. But there you go, there you go. So we start looking at the, the legs that are underneath that table that are holding up the um, and maybe there's lots of different ones maybe this isn't just it's not just one thing maybe there's lots of different tables but let's work on each table at a time and go for the weakest legs first and then the strongest legs start to get weaker so the weak legs go first and you knock one weak leg away and it's only a matter of time before maybe a few more of the weaker legs drop away anyway without any effort focus or doing anything it just naturally occurs and then the ones that are maybe stronger but not the strongest become the weakest and then they start to drop and you can start knocking some of those away. And eventually you've got the strongest legs that are no longer, they might be the strongest, but they're now weak. They're as weak as the weakest ones were before. And they're ready to go. They may a bit, be a bit more determined because they've stayed there. They've, you know, they're, they're used to being there. Or when one, when one goes, another one goes. And you can just knock them away by doing different things, different techniques that I'm going to be discussing over you know the coming months. But when you think about it though, if you start knocking the, the weak ones out of the way, it's almost like you don't have to do anything after that. Because the ones that were stronger than the weak ones become the weak ones and eventually it gets too much for them because they were used to the support of the weak ones. 
so they can't handle it and then uh, they they go they just collapse on their own and then the strongest ones depending on where they are if they're spread out then it, the support will stay for longer but eventually they'll become weak and weaker and weaker and then it'll, they'll, some of them will collapse and then the rest of them will just collapse and what happens is that big heavy table let's say it's made of marble comes crashing down on a concrete floor breaking up to a million pieces and then a wind comes and blows it all away so there's no way it can't be what it was that feeling, that emotion cannot be the same because it's broken. It doesn't change uh, if it's connected to an, uh, a memory. You know, what's happened has happened, but the emotion connected to it has changed. It's like a healing. reminds me a little bit of uh, when I had a, a steroid injection in my shoulder so uh, I'm uh, I'm, inc- I'm saying I, I need to I'm trying not to say negative things about myself but over the years I've been I have been incredibly clumsy I've broken bones bashed myself up all kinds of things and I don't know why that is I think it might be a spatial awareness thing I don't know or maybe it's because I used to be really slim and now I'm a bit podgy. And I still think I'm I'm like a dog that's huge but thinks they're little. And they keep banging into things. <laughs> maybe that's what it is. Um, but yeah, I got up one day and I actually hit my shoulder on a shelf. On the edge of a wooden shelf. And I caused uh, real quite damage to my shoulder. Uh, I need an I need an operation, but I just don't want an operation, so I, I'm just sort of let it, just coping with it. I had it for 14 years, and um, the first steroid injection I had, because that's when I was in a lot of pain, and the pain just left. It was literally like I was naturally just healed instantly. Yeah, I wasn't, but the pain left. So the injury was still there. The, the thing still, you know, the it still happened. I still bashed my shoulder on the shelf, but there was zero pain. And there wasn't any pleasure. There was pleasure as in relief, but it wasn't a drug, like painkillers that would give me a little bit of a high or anything like that. It was just a sterile injection, which was very painful when it was put in there. But then afterwards, like, wow. And what I noticed is I didn't worry about it anymore. I wasn't concerned about it. I didn't even think about it anymore. So what that pain, uh, that, that steroid injection did was it gave me time to not think about an operation that was required to not worry about moving my arm in case it hurt my shoulder or anything like that suddenly I didn't care anymore and that made a big difference because emotionally with chronic pain which it is it emotionally and if you're relaxed and you're calmer, then the chronic pain reduces. That's a, that's a, a scientific fact. These studies, there's been studies, I knew this years ago, but uh, new studies have actually come out and said this. I mean, a lot of people have known it for a long time. It's just, and I've, I've, done, I've done pain relief with people in person And I used to have it on my website, relaxation equals pain reduction. 
which it does. So, that kind of peace of mind changes it. So even though the event has happened, so someone might have been in a car crash or something like that, for example, it doesn't change what happened. And it's not a numbness. It's not about numbness. It's not about not caring. It's not about um, anaesthetic, you know. Because anaesthetic wears off, doesn't it? It's not. It's not like that. It's almost. It's changed. You can't drink out of a cup that has a hole in the bottom. I nearly said it had a hole in it, but they've all got holes in them at the top. But if a hole, if there's a hole at the bottom of your cup, or mug, coffee mug, you can't use it. And you stop using it. And you stop thinking of it as a coffee mug, or a coffee, uh, tea cup, or whatever. And the chances are, you're just going to chuck it in the bin and forget all about it. And you're not going to think about that coffee mug ever again. So going back to this remote control uh, flying machine, this little uh, plane. So you've imagined that plane is one of those legs, okay? It could be a weak leg. But as I said, everything is connected. So we've got the that little that weak leg of that table could represent something that has affected you emotionally in the past. When you think about it, you get a, a medium sense. To be fair, it might change now just after me talking, but it, if you think of something different maybe than what you had before, because that might have already changed. So now you've got a feeling that's unpleasant. It's not a pleasant feeling. And it is okay to have unpleasant feelings. I think the idea of getting rid of all unpleasant feelings is kind of a pointless exercise because that's part of being alive. It's part of life, isn't it? It's not all pleasure and it's not all discomfort. It's, it's a mixture. And none of those feelings last. Um, but there are some feelings that are just horrible, that are unnecessary. And I think they're the ones worth getting rid of or changing or reducing. Just like if there's a feeling that you really enjoy that comes from an activity that you enjoy doing, you just automatically do more of it, don't you? If you love watching Friends on telly, you know, if you love that television show and it gives you a warm feeling of um, pleasure... Uh, familiarity, safety, whatever it is you get from watching your favourite television show and it's funny, or what, you know, whatever it is, you keep watching it. You might be watching it 20 years after it was first broadcast on telly, which is now really, isn't it? But you still get that feeling. And you do it, you watch that programme because it it triggers a feeling of comfort and safety and joy and well-being so that makes sense doesn't it to sort of to not grab hold of that stuff but to move to move towards that stuff that feels nice and to maybe do less of the stuff that feels unpleasant at the same time as accepting that some things are unpleasant. But there's levels to what you should accept. I've, I, so I think. I think if something's affecting your life in a really, really negative way, then it does need addressing. But if something's affecting your life in a really, really positive and beautiful way, enjoy it. Kind of. 
Unless it's hurting other people, of course, but or yourself. Anyway, so you've got this plane, lovely little plane, little remote control plane, and you know you can watch it take off, and you know you can just watch it fly around the garden, hoping it doesn't hit a tree, and then you can just allow it to land gently and it might be a plane that you've built yourself you know it might be a kit which you build it a model one or maybe one you bought that's fully functionable um, that will is that a real word functionable functional uh, straight away out of the box neither of those things are really relevant but that plane can represent an emotion, an emotional response do you have to something? Now you can think what that thing is. Think what that thing is. So, um, because ultimately, when we think about it, we give it wings, we give it the energy to take off. We are the wind <laughs> beneath its wings, in a sense. So if that, that thing is maybe a fear, a fear of uh, doing something, and again, I'm not talking about an extreme situation, or maybe it's a, a memory that bugs you, doesn't traumatise you, but it bugs you. Uh, so it's, it's up to you what you choose. Just think of something that is very low on the scale. So if you've got a 10 being the, the most uh, anxiety-provoking, stress-provoking uh, um, emotion, we're going to look at maybe a 3 or a 2. But that also depends because a 3 might be high. So do a low one. That's what I'm asking you but something that does have an emotional reaction. So not something you don't care about because that's pointless, because that's not going to be there. Something that you don't care about at all is not going to be one of those legs holding up, uh, supporting the really big uh, anxieties and stuff. So just think, let's see if what I can think of. Um, uh, let's think. Yeah, okay, I've got one. So it's uh, something that I was something I was worried about. I still think I kind of worry a little bit, but it's not a big worry. Just just about somebody uh, concerned. But so I'm going to think of that, have that emotion, just kind of tap into it a little bit, and I'm going to connect it to that plane. So in my mind, I'm going to take that plane off. And just like press, you know, go or whatever you do on those remote controls. In fact, what I'm going to do is ground the plane. I'm going to get rid of the remote control. And I let the the emotion control the plane. Let that literally be the wind beneath its wings and control it. So I'm going to control the plane with the emotion. That little plastic, might be wooden, I don't know, uh, model plane. So with that emotion in your body, in your mind, just let the plane take off just fly into the air it's only a little thing 
fly into the air, maybe fly around the garden a couple of times, and then let it land. And as it comes up and it lands and it stops, let it stop near your feet. You know, you're in your garden, or it could be a park, maybe someone else's garden. You know, it's just imagination, isn't it? And uh, let it, you know, let it stop, come to a stop at your feet. Uh, it's all safe to pick up, so you know you can pick it up and just looking at it. You can see that it's just a plane, you know, just got wings, got a little taily thing at the back. It's got a little propeller at the front. And, uh, got, you know, what's it? Probably got three little wheels, two wheels at the front, one at the back, at the bottom, you know. It's a nice little, nice little uh, model plane. It's per, you know, it's the reason it works is because it's perfectly built. It's aligned, and you know, it's a miniature of a real plane. And everything has to be perfect in order for it to work. So you think about this emotion and this this thing that caused stress in the past, this incident, or, you know, the emotion. It's more about the emotion rather than the incident or the worry or concern. It's actually the, the feelings you have. That's the problem. That's been the problem, is the, the feelings and the effects it has on us mentally and physically and emotionally. So that's all in that plane. That's all connected. It's now in that plane, it's actually out of your body and it's in that plane. So you can step back from the plane. And actually as I do that, I feel, I'll be honest with you, I feel quite, quite good. The idea that all those emotions connected, that were inside me, are now inside the plane. It's like, oh, and I'm just stepping back, only a little bit, only like a couple of steps, I'm stepping back uh, from the plane. And it's like, oh, this actually feels pleasurable. I can feel it in my face, the back of my head, the back of my neck, my shoulders, my chest, even my hands, my whole body, even down to my hips. Even, which is weird, because I've I've been having pains in my back and my neck lately, and that pain's not there, and my lower back pain's not there either. It's almost like a, um, an itchy, but not a needing to be scratched itch. Just a, like a heat, you know that healing itch that you get, which you can feel sometimes when a, a cut is healing, or something like that, and it's, it's not, You don't need to scratch it, but you can feel it. You can feel the body healing itself. So so I'm stepping back and I'm feeling this real release, comfort. This is how I'm feeling right now. And even though the issue, I didn't really think it was really a particularly big thing that I was worrying about. I feel really good right now I feel really that release so maybe there's other things connected to it that I'm not aware of and I don't need to be aware of it there's other things connected to that worry maybe other things similar situations maybe more of those legs holding that big table up are also connected to that emotion and they're also in there. They've moved into that plane. And anyway, whatever, it feels nice. So what happens now is there's a few things you could do. In all fairness. 
you could decide to take control of the plane because you're no longer got those emotions in you so you can't control it but the remote control can control it so pick up the remote control again and just press forward and let it fly off but this time unless, instead of letting it fly around the garden just let it continue to fly and watch it fly up into the sky towards the sun Maybe you can just about see it. Maybe you can't see it anymore. It's too far in the distance. Maybe it, the energies helped it, the energy that it had inside helped it reach the sun. It's just gone into the sun never to be seen again. So there's a different feeling now. Before I had a, a kind of a sense of excitement maybe, as well as feeling good. Now it, it feels more relaxed. I'm more... Yeah, very relaxed, very calm. So the only thing really to do to make sure that that plane can never come back is you don't want someone getting hold of that remote control, do you? So what you need to do is put the remote control on the floor. Just stand on it. It's only a plastic remote control. It's not, it's not some big expensive thing. It's only made of really cheap plastic. And you can just stand on it and you can just see it crush. Never, it can't be used anymore, it's, it's broken now. The remote control is broken. There's no way of retrieving that plane. And as you look at that broken remote control, you can watch as it just turns to dust. Just blows away in the wind. Just notice how you're feeling. And realizing that actually this is something you can do with more of the other feelings that you have, other emotions and issues. You can play with it, you can test it. Maybe not right now, just enjoy it the feeling that you're feeling, the way that you're experiencing those sensations in your body at this moment. And each time you do this, you can just have a, a new plane and go through the process and enjoy how you feel. So that does bring us to the end of this recording. Thank you for listening and I'll speak to you very soon. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.